Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. This is day 499 of our trek, and today is Motivation Monday. Every Monday, we will hike the trails of life that will encourage and motivate you to live a rich and satisfying life for this week. Today, let us explore a trail called Stay Motivated Long Term. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. We were finally able to get a replacement engine for our lawn vacuum, but as of the time of creating this podcast, the weather does not look good for using it this weekend. Since all the leaves have finally fallen off the trees, it is only a matter of time before I can get them all picked up. By the looks of it, I have about two more days of leaf harvest left before I finish the season. This does include blowing leaves off the roofs and cleaning the gutters that need it. There is no big rush, as the leaves will remain there until I get them. But I am motivated to complete this project before Christmas so that it will be finalized. Thinking about motivation, as we break camp and head out for our trek for today, let us invest time exploring the concept of staying motivated long term. During the past two Mondays, we have explored what motivation is and that to be motivated sometimes requires that you take action first. That may get us started, but the real question that we need to answer is how do we stay motivated long term? And the first area we want to look at today is to stay motivated by using the Goldilocks rule. Imagine that you're playing tennis. If you try to play a serious match against a four-year-old, you'll quickly become bored. The match is just too easy. On the opposite end of the spectrum, if you try to play a serious match against a professional tennis player like Roger Federer or Serena Williams, you will find yourself demotivated for a different reason. That match would be just too difficult. Compare these experiences to playing tennis against someone who is your equal. As the game progresses, you win a few points, you lose a few points. You have a chance of winning the match, but only if you really try. Your focus narrows, your distractions fade, and you find yourself fully invested at the task at hand. The challenge you are facing is just manageable. Victory is not guaranteed, but it is possible. Tasks like these, science has found, are the most likely to keep us motivated long term. Human beings do love a challenge, but only if it's within our optimal zone of difficulty. Tasks that are significantly below our current abilities are boring. Tasks that are significantly beyond our current capabilities are discouraging. Tasks that are right on the border of success or failure are incredibly motivating to your brain. In this zone, you want nothing more than to master the skill just beyond your current horizon. This is referred to as the Goldilocks Rule. The Goldilocks Rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are just on the edge of their current abilities. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. Working on the task that adheres to Goldilocks rules is one of the keys to maintaining long-term motivation. If you find yourself feeling unmotivated to work on the task, it is often because it has drifted into an area of boredom or has been shoved into an area of great difficulty. You need to find a way to pull your task back to the border of your abilities, where you feel challenged but capable of doing it. The next area we want to look at is how to reach your peak motivation. The wonderful blend of happiness and peak performance is sometimes referred to as the flow. Flow is what athletes and performers experience when they are in the zone. Flow is a mental state you experience when you are so focused on your task at hand that the rest of the world just fades away. In many ways, we could describe the flow as your state of peak motivation. You would be hard pressed to find a state where you are more driven to continue the task that you are working on. One factor that researchers have found linked to the flow state is whether or not you are following the Goldilocks rule that we mentioned earlier. If you are working on challenges of optimal difficulty, then you'll not only be motivated but also experience a boost in happiness. As psychologist Gilbert Brim put it, one of the more important sources of human happiness is working on tasks that are suitable level difficulty, neither too hard nor too easy. To reach a state of peak performance, however, you need to not only work on the challenge to the right degree of difficulty, but also measure your immediate progress. As another psychologist, Jonathan Haidt, put it, one of the keys of reaching your flow state is to get immediate feedback about how you're doing at each step. Thus, we can say the measurement is a key factor in motivation. To put it more precisely, facing an optimal challenge and receiving immediate feedback about the progress you are making toward the challenge are two of the most critical components of peak motivation. But the third big question that we need to address today is what to do when your motivation fades. Inevitably, your motivation to perform tasks will dip at some point. What happens when your motivation fades? I don't claim to have all the answers, but here are some of the things I try to remind myself when I feel like giving up. First is, your mind is a suggestion engine. 
Consider every thought you have as a suggestion, not an order. When you have a task to accomplish, you need to program your mind to suggest that you will feel very good about accomplishing the task once it is done. Your mind needs to suggest that you will respect yourself more when you stick to your schedule. It needs to suggest that you have the ability to finish the task, even if you don't feel like it. Remember, none of the suggestions are orders, they are merely options. You have the power to choose which option to follow. The second point is, discomfort is temporary. Relative to the time in your normal day or week, nearly any habit you perform is over quickly. Your workout will be finished in an hour or two. Your report will be typed to completion by tomorrow morning. Life is easier now than it's ever been. 300 years ago, if you didn't kill your own food and build your own house, you would die. Today we whine about forgetting our iPhone charger. So maintain perspective. Life is good and your discomfort is very temporary. Step into the moment of discomfort and let it strengthen you. The second point is you'll never regret good work once it's done. Theodore Roosevelt famously said, Far and away, the best prize that life has to offer is a chance to work hard at work worth doing. So often it seems like we want to work easily at work worth doing. We want our work to be helpful and respected, but we don't want to struggle through our work. We want our stomachs to be flat and our arms to be strong, but we don't want to grind through another workout. We want the final results, but not the failed attempt that preceded. We want the gold, but not the grind. Anyone can want a gold medal. Few people want to train like an Olympian. Yet despite our resistance to it, I have never found myself feeling worse after hard work was done. There have been many days when it is hard to start. Sometimes the simple act of showing up and having the courage to do the work, even in an average manner, is victory worth celebrating. And the last point we want to realize is that this is life. Life is a constant battle about giving into ease of distraction or overcoming the pain of discipline. It is not an exaggeration to say that our lives and our identities are defined by this delicate balance. What is life if it is not the sum of a hundred thousand daily battles and tiny decisions to either gut it out or to give up? The moment when you don't feel like doing your work. That is not a moment to be thrown away. This is not a dress rehearsal. This moment is your life as much as any moment. Invest in it in a way that you'll be proud. And as a Christ follower, there is also a higher calling to maintain motivation and to complete the tasks that are required of us, as it is told to us in Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. Work willingly at whatever you do, as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward, and that the master you are serving is Christ. As we finish our trek for today, let me ask you this. What practices and habits do you have in your life so that you'll maintain your motivation long term? Let me know if I can assist you in any area. Tomorrow's short trek will be part of our Wisdom Unplugged series, and we'll also be celebrating our 500th day on our Wisdom Trek. Thank you for joining me on this trek called life. Also, encourage your family and friends to join us, and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. If you'd like to listen to any of the past daily treks, they are available at wisdom-trek.com. And the journal for today's trek is available at wisdom-trek.com also. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend. As I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, Led to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.